Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Welcome to the Garden Canvas. I wanted to give you a quick update on our winter sowing. It is March the 30th, and we've learned some lessons, uh, found some things that didn't work, and found some things that did work. Let's go take a look at what we've got, and uh, you'll see what's working and what hasn't worked. Okay, so you can see quite a few containers that we have. Um, we've experimented with a few different things, and we've planted a few other things that, that you haven't seen. I'll show you some of the containers that we've that we started out with uh, this was one of the earliest ones that I did this is cilantro and I have already untaped it a, a while ago and that was the Dollar Tree seeds from my Dollar Tree winter seed sowing video so those produce very well we have a few days this week of a threat of frost on Thursday and Friday so I'm gonna wait till we get past that before I start transplanting anything major uh, this is a container of blanket flower which is the original Gallardia um, it's not a cultivar I actually sowed it let's see we sowed that on February the 13th and you can see it's huge it's ready to break apart and transplant into the ground in different areas. Snapdragon here. Uh, this is a dwarf Shasta daisy. And I haven't opened that container yet, but that's getting quite full. Uh, this is a mixed Coreopsis, dwarf Coreopsis. Since then I've also planted, this was on March the 5th, big blue salvia. And that's doing quite well we didn't have a lot of seeds from this package I got that from park seeds but it was only like 15 in the package uh, this is gloriosa daisy which was so sowed on February the 13th good sized plants are ready to go in the ground also just planted tithonia this is Mexican sunflower did that last week and as you can see they're already coming up not necessary that you have to do tithonia it's a warm season, just like sunflowers. It's a warm season uh, seed, so you really don't have to do it this way, but this does give you some protection in case you do have a late frost. And that's exactly what we're having this week. So I feel good about that. We've got a little bit of a jump start on these. It's another container of Mexican sunflower. And that was, that was done about a week prior to the other container. This is another thing that I've done as you can see, I've, I've taken a hole puncher and I punched a hole on both sides and then just used some wire so that I can tie these back up on a night we might get a little cold. But really good results all together. This is Shasta Daisy. We also have some Cupid's Dart here. It's done well. Some more Dwarf Coreopsis. Now let me show you the vegetable garden because this was a container that I I did it was actually in this container which I've already got something else in that now but let me show you what the vegetable garden did a lot of this stuff I planted in January and February but we've already transplanted those into the beds all right so this is our mixed greens bed I actually probably need to come over and water the spinach has gotten a little dry on the bottom here but this is this is how it turned out uh, this is auric I sowed this in winter sowing uh, January the 25th. Uh, we have some spinach here, which is looking not great. Uh, kale as well. This is Swiss chard. More spinach. And this is the Salanova lettuce that I got from Johnny Seed. This is the Australian, I cannot remember. In the, uh, I'll post that in the notes below that will tell you with the variety of this uh, romaine lettuce but this has done really well so far it seems really happy and it's growing very fast this is a Grand Rapids lettuce seedling here and also some cabbage a few other things I'm excited about here uh, this is the container that I used to have the other vegetables in after I got those out and planted them in the bed I went ahead and sowed some of the more warm season plants and so here I have uh, this is a Galahad tomato. I think that's how you pronounce that. I got that from Johnny Seed. Uh, Cherokee purple tomato right here. We have basil. 
here. Uh, this is Bear Creek tomato. Have a few nasturtium here that haven't shown any sprouts yet. And this is a purple alyssum here. This is the Stokes Aster that you saw me sow in the original winter sowing video. That's a native to our area and that is coming up fine. That's the one I actually use the Dollar Tree domes on. This is another container that I planted in which we have a purple gomfrina here and we have mahogany splendor hibiscus that we'll use, my wife will prim primarily use that for her cut flowers but we'll also use it for just general interest in the, in the landscape. Now as I mentioned in the, in the previous video you can use any kind of container that you can put soil in and cut holes that's clear that can receive sunlight you can use any type of container and I'll show you a few of those now. So here are a few other ideas of some containers that you can use for winter sowing. Every one of these are food packaging. Uh, this is a package that I got some cherry tomatoes in after we ate our tomatoes, put soil in the bottom. This, this actually is a, a clear decal that's on top of those. There's a big hole here, so that's how I filled it. And it's got holes here, holes in the bottom, and also cut additional drainage holes also. So here I have some uh, dill and some parsley. This is a spinach container. Here I have some lemon basil seedlings. Just planted those last week, already coming up. And this yellow that you see here, this is pollen. This is a common thing for our area this time of year. But that's white alyssum there. Both of these containers are white alyssum. Just sowed it last week. Uh, this is from the original winter sowing video. This is cardinal flower. If you remember the tiny, tiny seeds. And as you can see, the seedlings themselves are tiny, but there are hundreds of them probably. Just a ton of cardinal flower. And that is a native of our, of our area. This is an interesting one. This is the clear egg crates. And I'm gonna show you how they work. Basically, I've got it upside down. That way, I can use this by pulling this back. I can bottom water this. So instead of using the top portion, I've just make sure I have holes here and holes in the bottom section of the of the egg crate right here, and I just cut holes in each one. That way, if I want to put a little bit of water in the bottom of the tray here, I can bottom water it instead of you know getting a, a lot of rainwater but as you can see this is white alyssum and it's done quite well and as i said this is one of the other containers i had of the butterfly milkweed and this is the Asclepius tuberosa. So we have a few more plants of our own. And in the meantime, I do want to show you a few other things that we've got going on in our garden. If you remember, this is the video I did, or this is the row of boxwoods I did the video on. And a few lessons I've learned from this is sometimes dogs do not know their boundaries. And so I've had a few issues with them running through and snapping a branch off. I'm just gonna get the clippers and prune those. That's happened a few times over the winter. So this is baby gem boxwood and it does bronze. Got a little bit of weeding to do here too. And then I think this is most likely my dog lifting his leg. And unfortunately I'll just have to clip that out but it should bounce back on in the middle without any issues. So I don't know if you guys have dogs, but that does happen when you, when you have dogs and a garden. Uh, these silicogium have just about finished their bloom cycle. And I did move recently these hookra here, and as you can see, they're starting to bud now. So that's the first flower bud from these. Just transplanted these about two weeks ago. This is a pot that I stuck hardwood cuttings last fall uh, for dappled willow so each one of these is a separate plant and I just need to divide them out and 
put them somewhere or give them away. But I love dappled, dappled willow. If you've got a wet spot in your yard, it's a huge shrub eventually, but it is a beauty in the spring. If you're not familiar with it, it this, is, this is not a flowering shrub at all. It does not flower. This is strictly the leaves. It's a variegation that's white, pink, and some of the variegated leaves as well in the new growth. So it's a beautiful plant. And there's probably about 10 or 15 individual plants in here that I just stuck hardwood cuttings down in the potting soil of this pot and just kind of abused it. But very, very good shrub. Our daffodils have about finished. At least these two have. And this is another variety that came up a little bit later. Two other varieties. These boxwoods here I did add in addition to the original ones. This is from the original boxwood video. And I added this row to carry it around that Japanese maple. So a lot, a lot to do in the garden over the next few weeks, but we're super excited about it. 